Okay, the reason you're struggling with your golf game is because you're hitting the wrong part of the golf ball, more of the outside part of the ball. And hitting the outside part of the ball causes two main problems at impact. Number one being low point control. And you're probably wondering, how is hitting the outside part of the ball affecting low point? That's a great question. And to better answer that question, you need to understand the hand to handle to face relationship. Palms are controlling the handle, fingers are controlling the face. When we talk about the proper impact position, we want to ensure that the palm is leading the fingers. If we're hitting the outside part of the ball, more than likely what's happening is that the fingers are back of the palm. This is causing the handle to work backwards and club head to work more forward. This is causing more of that scoop and the flip, causing you to hit more of the outside part of the ball, really affecting that low point. And the second thing that's going to be affected is the swing direction. Because the fingers are working this way relative to the palm, this is causing that club to work more outside the target line and leftward. Okay, this is for all the slicers out there, this is a really familiar sight for you. So in today's video, we're gonna walk through how to improve these two key positions of low point control and swing direction. And we're gonna do it in a way that you've probably never heard talked about before. And it's by understanding how to get the proper post impact position. The post impact is when the club head is parallel to the ground after the ball has been struck. And I know you're probably wondering, Ethan, the ball's already been struck. Why does it matter what's happening after impact? And again, another really good question. And to better answer that, we gotta go back to the hand to handle the face relationship. See, the golf ball is receiving information from the face and the club face is receiving information from the handle. And the handle, you can see where I'm going with this, is receiving information from you, in particular, your hands or your claws. And don't worry, I know that sounds kind of scary, but I've already described how you're going to be doing that. Your palms are controlling the handle and your fingers are gonna be controlling the face. But not all your fingers, these two in particular, the pinches or what we call the Vs. If you've seen any of our other videos, we talk about these Vs being the keys. And in the Tiger video, we talked about how these Vs are relative to the top edge of the club face. Now that we understand your role in this kind of superhero movie where we're trying to keep the golf ball out of the hazards. Let's get into understanding how post impact is going to improve low point control and swing direction. Okay, so let's talk about these post impact parameters. Okay, we're saying this is gonna be the key to understanding how to get that proper low point control and swing direction. So let's talk about where the hands, the handle, and the face need to be at this position. And again, post impacts when the club is parallel after the ball's been struck. And there's three things that we wanna really wanna make sure of. We wanna make sure we got the proper hand position where we feel like we're pushing down and forward with those palms. Okay, imagine that kind of beach ball pushing under the water and then through the water, there's a lot of resistance. So again, that's why we wanna feel a cup in that wrist and pushing with that palm, pushing with both palms really, but especially this one. That is the same pressure that we're gonna be applying to the side of the handle. This is ensuring that at this post impact position, the handle is about five inches outside of the lead leg. Okay, so now that we've got the proper parameters of hands and handle, we're gonna talk about how the Vs are gonna be pointing at or slightly right of the target. Okay, this is going to ensure that that club head is working down and around the palms. So as we're coming through, here we are at the post impact position, pushing with those palms and the fingers are working down and around those palms. Okay, and that's going to ensure club heads in the proper position at post impact. And now again, we're talking about the post impact position. How is that fixing impact? And let's talk about it. So now that we got these proper parameters, so let's rewind just a little bit and go to the proper pre-impact position to where the palms are still pushing down and forward the same way they were at post impact. The butt end of the golf club, instead of being outside the lead leg is now at the middle of the trail thigh, okay? And the Vs, instead of pointing basically at the target, are pointing away from the target. This is ensuring that the club head is staying up and back of the handle. And this is extremely important because this is what's going to ensure that we're getting the proper swing direction, okay? But 
the proper low point control is now going to be a piece of cake because all we're going to do is just maintain this consistent push pressure and keep the handle moving forward because we know where we're trying to get to now at post impact. So in order to get there, the ball is just going to get in the way. <laughs> okay, we're going to be pushing as hard as we can on the side of this handle, feeling that trail wrist staying cupped, fingers staying up and back of the palm, and we got the proper pre-impact positioning and proper understanding of post-impact. Now, guess what? The ball is just going to get in the way. We're going to pass right through this toll being impact with the palms pushing down and forward, fingers staying up and back of the palm, keeping the club head up and back. And then now from here, it's almost like Imagine there's a nail sticking out of the inside part of the golf ball at like a 45 degree angle, and here's your hammer. We want to feel like we're hammering on that sideways angle. That's going to ensure that club head is working down and around relative to the palms. So the Vs are really staying on the side as long as possible. But again, they're not going to stay on the side and just stay like this because that wouldn't make sense, right? Because we know that they have to get to here post impact so it's naturally going to kind of create better dynamics with your hands to handle in the face because of understanding where they need to get to so when we're feeling that sensation of hammering on the side that sideways angle really driving that nail through the inside of that ball you can see that club head staying up and back toe back of the heel now if we just drive that heel feel like that trail arm goes from bent to straight that's when we're going to get full extension and then now the v's are going to pivot around but it's kind of subconscious because we're exerting so much pressure on the side of that handle those v's are just going to pivot around but again this isn't something where i'm trying to consciously get those v's to pivot if i just push on the side with enough force on the proper angle and feel that trail arm go from bent to straight and the lead arm nice and straight you're just going to create this kind of gear effect down here at the bottom and that gear effect is really everything when it comes to understanding how to get this proper impact so again we've got that proper low point control now because the handle is forward of the club head and we got the proper swing direction because the club head is staying up and back because the v's are staying up and back of the palms again palms handle v's face now we can use this to have a better understanding of why the golf ball did what it did if it started too far left well the fingers didn't stay up and back of the palms enough that's probably going to cause those low point issues and also the swing direction issues like we said with those slicers so what do we do we get the fingers back of the palm drive the palm which keeps the handle ahead of the club head and then full extension trail arm goes from bent to straight see there's a lot of questions where people want to know when is the trail arm straightening how long is it staying bent in again by focusing on where it needs to be at the end zone with full extension as soon as you get up to the top of the swing if you just think get to that end zone as quick as possible you're already going to be naturally straightening that trail arm and that's the big key right if you're thinking about holding on and things like that then you don't have the proper parameters of where those v's need to be relative to the palms so now if we just hit a ball all i'm going to really be focusing on when i'm hitting this golf ball is trying to get these proper parameters trying to get the handle positioned to where it's about five inches outside the lead leg i'm trying to get the palms pushing on the side of the handle as much as i can feeling that trail arm go from bent to straight and i'm trying to feel those v's pointing at or even slightly right of the target ensuring that that toe isn't turning over too much again if i'm just thinking about just that there's going to be a lot of really good things that happen in the swing and if i do this properly i should get a ball that starts slightly to the right and curves back to the left we call this a push draw okay the ball is starting to the right because as i'm coming through the handle is ahead of the club head which is keeping the heel of the golf club leading the toe which is keeping the face open but then because i'm feeling that trailer i'm straightening that's getting that path working more to the right as that club is working down and through the inside of that golf ball so just a nice little push draw here focusing on just that sticking that finish is what we call it boom and maybe a little bit too much draw but for the average golfer that's slicing the ball i mean that's a sight to behold right so now we can kind of use that as a way to see okay i did what i wanted to do there the ball started 
slightly to the right of the target and curve to the left. Now, if we want that to not finish so far left, we think about our parameters. Having the handle driving more is going to make it a little bit easier to have the heel leading the toe a little bit longer. And then those Vs may be pointing slightly more to the right and not as turned over should make that club face just a little more open relative to the path. Those proper parameters where I'm trying to get to at post impact. And now just sticking that finish, boom. That's giving me the proper pre-impact positioning and then just driving that hammer right through that nail. Better. Slight push, but that felt like it was maybe just a little bit too much hold on. So maybe I could have let those Vs kind of pivot over a little bit more. See, again, it's just understanding how much are you driving the palms and what are the fingers doing relative to that? And what are the Vs? doing relative to that. So that's what you're using to self-analyze and correct yourself. And as we keep continuing with the series, we're gonna kind of explore these different scenarios and talk about how we as instructors would recommend you making these adjustments in being your own coach and being able to self-analyze and correct your golf game. So hope you really enjoyed this video. It's fun just talking about these ways that we can really simplify the golf swing if we understand this hand to handle to face relationship. Really appreciate everybody's support we've been getting. If you want to join our community, uh, we just launched our Claws Connect, uh, which is on Discord. It's just our way to connect with you, help you with your golf swing. Go ahead and send your swing over, send your claws, we'll grade them. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and throw a like on the video, subscribe if you want more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Yeah.